What's up, Math Scholars? We are coming at you live from Telartex room again, so I'm excited to be on a field trip. Hey, we only have two more lessons to learn before break. 3.3 day one, 3.3 day two. So who's excited about break coming up? Woo! So we're going to start with domain. Go ahead and jot down what it is. Domain is all possible values that can be plugged in for x. And you want to make sure when you're plugging these values in for x, you're getting out a nice real number for the solution. So if you would plug it in and get an imaginary, that would not quite count. All right, so let's take a peek at this first one together. Basically, we're going to look at this function, f of x equals the square root of x. And we're going to think what values can get plugged into x so that we can get real number solutions. So could I plug a positive number in for x? and get a real number solution. Yeah, I can square root positive numbers. Can I put a zero in for x? Are you allowed to square root zero? If you're not sure, type it in the calculator. Type in the square root of zero. See if it actually calculates, or see if you get an error. Yeah, it calculates out zero, and zero is a real number, so zero is good. Can you put a negative number in for x and get a real number solution? No. So basically, the only numbers you can put in, and I always think of a number line, if infinity lives here, and negative infinity lives here, and zero lives here, I think, what numbers could I plug in? I could plug in every number from here on up, right? And the way we say that mathematically is zero through infinity. So everybody say that with me. Zero through infinity. Zero through infinity. And that, what you see in red, is the domain. Now let me explain the bracket and parentheses, because you're probably confused that why harp did a bracket and a parentheses. So a bracket means including. And we do want to include zero in our domain because you can take the square root of zero. Now the parenthesis means not including. We don't include infinity because infinity is just a concept. It's not a real number. Thank you. All right, let's take a peek at our next one over there. f of x equals 4x squared. Let's think about what numbers we can put in for x. Can you put a positive number in for x and get a nice, happy, real number solution? Sure can. What about a 0? Sure can. What about a negative number? Sure can. So really, we can put in anything we want. So as far as the number line is concerned, we can do anything on the whole entire number line. And the way we write that is negative infinity through infinity. With parentheses on both. Can everybody say that with me? Negative infinity through infinity. Negative infinity through infinity. Yeah, so you get used to saying through when you see the comma. All right, that's what I'm having you practice. But it means all real numbers could go in for x. You want to try another? Let's try the function 5 divided by x minus 9. We're trying to come up with the domain or what numbers we could put in for x. So let's think of division as a whole. What, what do we know about division? There's one number you just are not allowed to divide by math. What is that number? Yeah? Zero. Zero. So as long as we keep our eye on that denominator and we make sure the denominator never equals zero, we'll be good. So I tend to just sometimes set my denominator equal to zero, and I say basically my denominator cannot equal zero, and solve it. And most people probably already knew the answer was nine. X can never be nine. But any other number in the whole entire universe would be fine for X. Positives, negatives, zero would be fine, but it can't be nine. So we we're going to write that as negative infinity through infinity is our domain. And then we're going to write the little tagline, except x cannot equal 9. Does that make sense? All right, let's take a peek over there at the right. Our function is 8, x to the 1 half. And we're thinking about what we can put in for x. Now, to me, exponents that are fractions are awkward, and I always prefer just to rewrite them as radicals. So let me refresh your memory on how that works. Your 1 can travel to the right. 
your two can travel to the left, and your two would become the jail guard of the radical. So it would be the square root of x to the first power. Do you remember that from a couple days ago? Your numerator goes to the right, your denominator becomes your jail guard, your radical. All right, so that allows me to think about this easier, because we do know a little bit about square roots. Uh, we talked about it a few minutes ago, but you can square root positive, right? Can you square root negatives? No. Can you square root zero? Yes. So our domain is just zero through infinity, the same as it was on the very first one we did today. Zero through infinity. All right, so what they do is they tell you what they want f of x to be. So f of x is 4x to the 1 half. Then they tell you what they want g of x to be, negative 9x to the 1 half. And then we are going to add f of x plus g of x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab f of x, which is 4x to the 1 half, substitute it in there. Then I'm going to grab g of x, negative 9x to the 1 half. And I'm going to simplify. Are those two like terms? Yeah, so we can do our little funny little apple trick. If I have four apples and I add on negative nine apples, how many apples do I have? Negative five apples, which is strange to say, but these aren't apples, they're x to the one halves. So that's your answer to f of x plus g of x. Now while we're looking at it, let's just go ahead and find the domain now, rather than, rather than wait till over when we get over to part c. For the domain, I like writing it with a radical, so I can see the radical. So we're going to take the 1, head to the right with it, take the 2, head to the left with it. So as a radical, it would be the square root of x to the first. So anybody think they know what the domain is? The domain is what values I could stick in for x. What do you think? Yeah? Zero through infinity, even you even set it like a scholar. We're going to put the bracket on the zero because we do want to include zero. I was just going to peek to make sure I did that on the last one. I did. Good. Um, but yeah, I'll give you a ticket for that. That was very scholarly. All right, part B. This time they want to take f of x and subtract g of x. So f of x is 4x to the 1 half. We're going to subtract off g of x, which is negative 9x to the 1 half. And I was just talking about this before school today. What happens when you have two negatives in a row? Keep change. Keep change, change. So plus a positive. I've got four apples, and I'm adding on nine apples. How many apples do I have? 13 apples, or 13x to the 1 half. If you want to see what that would look like as a radical, it'd be 13 times the square root of x because the 2 goes to the left and the 1 goes to the right. The little baby 2 right there, it's invisible. Um, but what's the domain? Anybody want to try it? It's still just square roots. It's going to be the same exact domain that Dylan's was 0 through infinity. All right, our last concept of the day is multiplying and dividing functions and then stating what the domain would be. All right, our, they're making new functions for f and g. We've got f of x equals 6x, and we've got g of x equals x to the 3 fourths. So they're brand new functions. f of x we're going to place in. And g of x will place in. But then we're going to try to simplify this a little bit. All right, just keep in mind there is a little dot right here and there is an invisible one right here. So what would I do mathematically to combine those x's? Add their exponents, good. So um, what we're going to do is need to add the number 1 plus 3 fourths. We need a common denominator. Um, what would be a good common denominator for these two? So that 1 is going to be rewritten as 4 over 4, so it will become a 7 over 4 bit. We're doing a lot of like review of 7th grade concepts here. 1 plus 3 fourths is 7 fourths. Is everybody on board Y? You get your common denominator, 4 over 4, add the top, get the 7, 
That's a seven. It looks weird. And then the four is on the bottom. All right, let's talk domain. I like to see what it looks like as a radical to help me with my thinking through the domain. Um, I would take my seven to the right and my four to the left. So it'd be six times the fourth root of x to the seventh power. So we've got to really think about what we, re we learned about roots recently. Can you fourth root a negative? Huh? -uh. It will give you an imaginary answer. Um, but you can fourth root a positive and you can fourth root zero. So fourth roots basically behave like square roots do. And your domain is only the positive numbers, including zero. So zero through infinity. And our very last one, we're dividing this time. f of x is going to be on top. That's 6x to the first. So I just like to put that one there for fun. And then our g of x is x to the 3 fourths. How are we going to reduce down those x's? Subtracting. Good. Do you remember the song I always like to sing? Bigger minus smaller. Put your answer where the bigger lives. So we will put our answer in the numerator. Um, 1 minus 3 fourths. Do you know what that would be? 4 fourths minus 3 fourths is 1 fourth. I did hear somebody say it. 1 fourth. If you want to see it in radical form, you can take that 4 off to the left. It will become the fourth root of x to the first power. Um, but what our domain would be, would be the same exact thing as over here. 0 through infinity because I cannot pour through any negative numbers. All right, thanks for joining me for my video today. Your homework is in the book, 4 to 18 evens, and you must show all work. Have a great Wednesday.